Chris Miraboli is the founder and CEO of Novos, the first human longevity company to simultaneously address the 12 mechanisms of aging, the biological causes of aging, through its innovative patent-pending over-the-counter formulations. With that in mind, we had just a truly exciting and totally interesting conversation around aging, what aging has historically been, becoming decrepit with failing health, and what it could possibly be like if we took everything we've learned about it and made intentional choices to age differently. This conversation was so fun and exciting. We hope you'll enjoy it. Hi, I'm Erin Power. And I'm Laura Rupsis. We're certified health coaches, and this is Health Coach Radio. This podcast is about the art, science, and business of health coaching. We share our insider tips to help you become a better coach and entrepreneur. And we interview expert guests to discover how they've made it in this growing field. It's time for health coaches to make an impact. It's time for Health Coach Radio. All right, Chris, thanks for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you, Laura. We're excited to have you. This is a topic that's, I I hate to use the term hot topic, but I I just think it's growing in popularity, this topic around longevity. So, um, and it's not one that we've discussed a lot on this podcast, actually, right, Erin? I mean, it doesn't, hasn't come up a ton. So this will be really excited. Um, We're really excited to pick your brain. So let's start, if you don't mind, sharing with our audience who you are, a little bit of your background story about how you got here. Sure. So I'm uh, originally from New York. I grew up in a small town in Long Island. Um, I became interested in in health and fitness when I was 12 years old. I picked up an issue of Men's Health Magazine and decided to uh, create a pull-up bar out of a steel pipe that we bought at Home Depot in our yeah. basement. And every single uh, afternoon after school, I do my pull-ups, my push-ups, and uh, try to eat what was considered at the time the healthy diet of, you know, uh, whole whole grains and you know uh low fat and so on and um which we've since evolved to realize there are better alternatives out there uh but when i was 16 years old i was suddenly stopped in my tracks i was on a school trip in new york city and i uh, woke up uh with blood all over my shirt it turned mm-hmm. out i had had a seizure and it was caused by what we would find out uh was a brain tumor and so that set me on a very different course for my life than I was originally expecting and uh, really uh, made me contemplate topics that most people don't think about when it comes to health and life until you know, maybe the later days of their life. I was thinking about in a, in a hospital bed whether I would wake up again. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that planted a seed in my subconscious, which essentially my, my interest in health evolved a lot. It went from one that was purely admittedly superficial. When I was a teenager, I just wanted to look good, be attractive for the girls, do well in sports, right? Um, to one that was actually more biologically driven. How, how do I avoid disease? How do I optimize myself? How do I feel as good as possible for the long term, not just for short term goals like, you know, uh, weight loss or muscle building or whatever the short term goal might be? Uh, but I want to be able to have those things while also being mindful of the long term that I'm not increasing the risk for another brain tumor or heart disease or Alzheimer's and so on. So that was in my mind over the years. I ended up going into entrepreneurship. Uh, I studied at NYU. I studied business there and um, started technology companies. But all the while, I was in my personal life obsessive about all things health, uh, between experimenting with diets paleo, pescatarian, ketogenic, to different supplements, uh, different exercise routines, uh, triathlon or um, or powerlifting, which tried it all. And um, uh, eventually in my early 30s, I, I was turned on to the scientific research uh, for longevity. And this was something that didn't make its way to the wellness world, the consumer world. We're starting to see that movement now. But uh, this was about a decade ago almost, and it was really just in the scientific laboratories and at the universities, and that's when I began to dig into the research, and I realized that there was something really legitimate and powerful that they were working on. Okay, wow. You know, I love how you framed that from the perspective of, um, you know, that massive um, event in your life, changing your 
your point of view on health, chasing health, trying to find health to this biologically driven health um, piece and this long-term view. When you came across the longevity research at the time, this is almost 10 years ago, what was there? Like, what did you learn? What, what at the time was showing up in the research? Yeah, so, uh, well, a couple of things. One is I, I became familiar with this concept known as antagonistic pleiotropy, which is a really big term for a relatively simple concept. It's, it's that your genes are not necessarily looking out for you in the long term. So in other words, your genes can actually provide you with health benefits today that then come back to harm you tomorrow. And why is that? It's because evolution wants to make sure that we survive long enough to procreate so the species, survive, species survives and then has very little interest in keeping us alive. Now, it has a little bit of interest because it does want some older people with wisdom to survive, but um, o- overall, it, it doesn't care for most of us to live that long, right? And so uh, something that might be really good for you in the short term, like, I don't know, say sun exposure, getting vitamin D production from it, and our genes are tuned to be able to do that then when you're older, that might then lead to a higher risk of uh, melanoma and um, skin cancer, right? So um, everything in balance, of course. So that that was one of the things that I learned, which uh, really helped me to then evaluate the different health um, lifestyle um, uh, approaches I was taking to, to look through that lens and say, is this something that is likely to be good for me in the short term and the long term? And the second thing I would say is there was a seminal paper in this really prestigious journal named Cell. And this paper, uh, it's called The Nine Hallmarks of Aging. And this was a meta-analysis. So in other words, they looked at hundreds of other studies that were previously published, and they were looking for essentially what are the biological causes of aging. And then they categorized these causes across these, these papers. Uh, and they identified nine different causes, everything from mitochondrial dis- dysfunction, which is a you know very popular concept in the wellness world, to lesser known things like cellular senescence or loss of proteostasis, uh, intracellular communication, and so on. Uh, in fact, just about two months ago, a new paper was published by the same authors of that original paper um, where they identified three new hallmarks. So we're at 12 hallmarks of aging. Uh, Again, these are biological causes, and they are all interconnected with each other. It's not like these are standalone causes. They all kind of work in concert to start to break us down and age us. And so realizing that then gave me, like with this perspective, um, then the idea of like, how can I try to impact these hallmarks, um, ideally simultaneously, all of them at the same time, which is now getting to the earlier earlier concept behind what I eventually founded, which is my company, Novos. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, I wonder if this is a weird question, but maybe you can tell us, tell me if it's a weird question, but I would love a definition around aging. And the only reason I'm asking is because I feel like maybe in the circles I run in, which is women in their late forties, when we think of aging, it's sort of like wrinkles, (laughs) you know, but, but what is, what is biological aging? Can you, is it possible to sort of define it or sum it up? Sure. So, so wrinkles would be a symptom of aging and those wrinkles are being caused by different hallmarks of the aging process. So for example, uh, one of them is senescent cells. Senescent cells are are zombie-like cells. So these are cells that no longer perform a function. Uh, They should be removed from the body, but for some reason they haven't been. Uh, One of the reasons, reasons a cell turns senescent is for example, it may have been cancerous. So the body has this way to like shut it down, but unfortunately it's not removed. And just like a zombie, it lets out these these molecules that then cause nearby cells to get damaged as well. And then they turn into these senescent cells also. And this is one of the things that can cause uh, wrinkling in the skin. Um, Another thing is something called crosslinks. So crosslinks are where sugar uh, will attach to proteins, which is um, part of what makes up our skin, our collagen, right? Uh, and it will then stiffen it. It prevents the the flexibility of, of that tissue, right? And so these hallmarks all add up to the symptom of your skin wrinkling. 
But mm-hmm. imagine what you're seeing on the outside is also right. happening on the inside to all of your other organs, right? Your internal organs, your heart, your blood vessels, your brain, and so on. So some people in the longevity world define aging as actually a disease. And this yeah. is the, the you know, a completely different mindset around aging. We always think of it as an inevitability. But some scientists look at it as this is a disease that leads to additional diseases. And if we can try to stop it at its root causes, or at least slow it down, the progression of the aging disease, we can then, of course, slow down the progression of all of these other diseases or symptoms like the skin wrinkling that you mentioned. Um, and that that's at the root cause. Whether you agree that it's a disease or not doesn't really matter. Uh, what does matter is to understand that the causes of aging then lead to all of these other things that go wrong when we get older, including skin wrinkling superficially, but more importantly, things like cancer and heart disease and Alzheimer's and diabetes, uh, dementia, you know, you name it, uh, glaucoma. It's all happening because of these hallmarks of aging. So if we can slow them down, if we can put a stop on some of them um, or reprogram some of them, like the epigenome, for example, we can then, uh, slow down the progression of aging and extend ex- essentially health span mm-hmm. and lifespan. And that is what longevity is, extending both health span and lifespan. I love that. So could you repeat that phrase antagonistic? What is pleiotropy? Antagonistic pleiotropy. Pleiotropy. Yes. Because I have been communicating that concept using my everyday, I didn't know, like, I had no idea that there was an actual like clinical term for it. Now I have it, which is awesome. It makes, it makes us sound a lot more sophisticated. Yeah, now, and right? I've been like, running around <laughs> with this the- theory, like explaining this to my, you know, 40 plus 50 year old women about why their body doesn't respond the way it used to, why, why they got away with so much more in their twenties than they do now that when they're in their so now I have a term. Thank you very much. Right. For that. Well, so let, let me clarify though. It's slightly yeah. different than that. So when, when you're yeah. younger, you might be able to get a, away with more things when you're younger, simply because your body is more resilient. So these yeah. hallmarks yeah. of aging haven't degraded as much. And so you can repair yourself faster. You can repair DNA quicker, so on and so forth. With antagonistic pleiotropy, it's specific to genetics and mm. certain genes that can help you um, in, in the short term, uh, especially when you're younger that that same exact gene comes back and harms you when you're older. So uh, APO um, um, Mm. uh, is is one of those genes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where like when, when you're younger, um, I believe uh, 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 losing my uh, train of thought here, but I believe it, it reduces, like it improves your immune system and it Mm -hmm. reduces your, your risk of getting sick. And so that's good to survive and to be able to procreate and so on. But then when you're older, higher risk of Alzheimer's, for example, right. right? That would be a, a, key example of antagonistic pleiotropy. Okay. Is the genetic predisposition to things like, um, to use the term Gary Tobbs uses those of us who fatten easily and folks that have a genetic predisposition towards storing more Oedipus tissue than others that remain leader in in the short term, it keeps us alive longer. We maybe perhaps, you know, we're not dying of like type one diabetes, but the downstream effects as we gain older in terms of how the pancreas works and how the body responds to these environmental triggers, food and movement and all these other things end up coming to bite us in the ass later, so to speak. Yeah, that that um, I I would imagine that that would fall under that concept as well, where essentially in the short term, yeah, it's keeping you alive and you're storing that fat, but then over time that those genes can then bite you with, you know, higher risk of type two diabetes or cardiovascular disease and and so on. But Mm -hmm. when when we're on the topic of uh, longevity and genetics, it's important to say that most people don't realize this, but there have been studies done where uh, they've concluded that approximately as much as 90% of your aging is dictated by lifestyle and only 10% is genetics. Now, some other researchers have gone as far as saying it's 30% genetics, but uh, the more sophisticated analysis says 10%. And so, uh, you know, what, whether it's 10 or 30, the point is the majority of it is really coming down to our lifestyles. And mm-hmm. so you can't look at someone and say, oh, it's their genes. That's why they're so healthy and living longer and so on. I think that that's, you know, the, the, the way to, you know, maybe, uh, excuse a, a lifestyle that's not as, as, um, you know, perhaps disciplined as, as, um, ideal 
for the most part, it's really coming down to uh, your lifestyle, diet, sleep, exercise and activity, stress, um, uh, deal, coping with stress, supplementation, making sure you're getting all of the essential nutrients that you need, as well as potentially longevity supplements as well. All of these things play a role in how you age. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think we should definitely jump into those. I just also just want to point out that it's so interesting. I just get really excited to um, consider the human body this way. I don't know if mm -hmm. anybody else listening gets excited to consider the human body this way, but that it, sometimes I think the health and fitness and wellness industry, oh, actually often I think the health and fitness and wellness industry really programmed us to believe that this meat suit we're walking around in is kind of dumb and needs to be micromanaged mm -hmm. um, in these kind of really contrived ways, you know, kind of with thinking through, you know, in our youth and the mating dance years of our lives, looking good so we can attract a partner, whatever it is. Well, in fact, our bodies are always evolving. They're, they're constantly evolving. And, and it's sort of a, um, I think it's a really elegant approach to look at the body this way mm -hmm. through phases of life, through age, through different ages. I, I think this is an opportunity for health coaches. And, and that's why I'm mentioning it is that where maybe the fitness and wellness industry of years gone by got us kind of stuck in these ruts. Health coaches, we have the opportunity to help clients understand that this is all very fluid as we move through the mm -hmm. stages of life. I think it's really exciting and cool. I get pretty excited about it. Yeah. And, and there, there, there's also, you know, when it comes to health coaching, um, of course, everyone has different goals. And when it comes specifically to longevity, there are certain things you might do differently for a longevity um, a customer uh, than you would for someone who's trying to like bulk up for a bodybuilding competition, right? So an example that I can give to that is related to the biological pathway mTOR, if you guys are mm -hmm. familiar with mTOR, right? So this is the growth pathway, mechanistic target of rapamycin. And this is great for muscle building and repair, for example, but it's also associated with shorter lifespans. And I don't want people to get all nervous here, but but essentially what it means is that if we are over activating mTOR and we're constantly doing it and we're never turning it off, then that is where we are potentially shortening lifespans as we see in different animal studies. And we even see it in, um, in, in certain cases re relevant to humans and different diseases and so on. And so that's where things like you know, the popular movement for fasting comes in or time restricted feeding comes in. Why are these things so healthy? Why are people saying that it can improve, you know, your weight loss or just your energy or your overall health and disease risk and so on? Not the only reason, but part of the reason is because we're deactivating mTOR. And if you think about throughout evolution, we've had these periods of feast and famine. And now yep. we never have famine. And what that means is we're always chronically activating mTOR when at times we want to dial it down and you dial it down by either restricting protein intake and ideally carbs as well, or going extended periods without food, whether that be time restricted feeding, you go 16 or 18 hours a day without eating, and then you eat in a smaller window, or ideally every so often, assuming you're healthy enough and you have enough body fat to do so. Um, and your doctor doesn't tell you not to, uh, go on a fast, a 24 hour fast. Uh, I've gone as long as 72 hours. There are some people that go even longer. Uh, you have to be careful with these things and kind of ease into it. Um, uh, but these are great ways to be able to, if overall health is your goal, these are great tools that you can use. If there's one thing I've learned in my years as a health professional, it's that changing lives is much easier when you're doing it alongside a team of experts. Physicians, nurse practitioners, and other care providers have learned this too, which is why they're looking for health coaches just like you to join their medical patient care team. Primal Health Coach Institute's Health Coaching in Medical Practices Specialist Certification prepares you for that. You'll learn how to work alongside a clinician and advise and motivate patients to change unhealthy lifestyle habits and manage chronic conditions. By the time your studies are complete, you'll be ready to secure a position at a practice that fits best with your coaching style and you'll have the tools you need to plan programs, accept referrals, and coach patients. 
If you're a health coach with a passion for helping patients get the life-changing information, encouragement, and accountability they need to make sustainable changes in their health, visit primalhealthcoach.com to learn more about the health coaching and medical practices specialist certification. Um, our sort of mentor, the uh, man who co-founded the school, the health coaching school, Aaron and I work for Mark Sisson, his tagline is live long, drop dead, right? Um, this idea of living awesome. And then you're just not alive, right? So what we have in like, you look back just whatever, a hundred years, the average life expectancy was 56, right? It's now much longer. So we have a longer lifespan, but I would argue we've shortened our health span. Like people are getting sicker at a younger age and it has 100% to do to our lifestyle factors and our environment. And this is right in the wheelhouse of a health coach, folks. This is what we do, right? Is help us say, okay, we now have, thank goodness for modern medicine week. You know, so many of us are living into our seventies, eighties, nineties, more and more, you know, centurions. However, if we're going to continue to just live in managed disease for decades, this is why our healthcare system is falling apart. And this is where health coaching comes in and empowering the clients to try to help kind of like outsmart this concept of antagonistic pleiotropy, <laughs> right? And through pulling different levers, right? Environmental levers, lifestyle and behavior levers, and then supplementing where, you know, just no matter how many of the proper levers we pull, we are just getting older just chronologically and there are things that mother nature eventually stops caring about that we need to care about if we want to maintain that health span. 100%. So I, I'm actually uh, giving a presentation tomorrow in, um, in Miami. And one of the things that, that I'm presenting there is exactly what you just said, which is uh, when it comes to health span and lifespan, the United States, um, has actually is one of the only countries in the world uh, among at least the the wealthy nations uh, that has actually reduced its health span. So basically the the gap between lifespan and health span, you want to have that gap to be as small as possible. And we have actually increased it um, by about 1% or so. And it's, it's, it's not in a positive direction. It's not in a positive trend. We're the only I, I believe there's maybe one other country that has has uh, done so, uh, but you're right. It's because of of the the lifestyle here, right? It's all all about uh, bigger is better, getting more is better. You know, um, about palatability and making things that are like foods that are addictively good. Um, you know, reducing self control and so on. So all of these things are actually leading to despite how many advances the medical system has had, right? Um, despite that, we are actually now kind of shortening lifespan. And that's where things like your coaching and longevity um, from my business's perspective is trying to get things back on track and extend it even further than it ever has been before. Right. Awesome. I'm thinking about this um, from the perspective of health coaches who who are interested in this realm. And, and I know I can think of a few health coaches that I know who want to specialize in longevity, which is great. But I don't know if many health, I don't know if many health consumers are articulating it like that. Do you know what I mean? I, I want to know what you think about this actually. Um, who is seeking longevity? Is it the biohacker crowd? Is it the already healthy adjacent crowd that wants to level up? slash how do we articulate the idea of longevity to the general population people in their 30s 40s who are kind of cruising into aging thinking this inevitability of aging is why they're getting fat why they're getting tired why they're getting their knees are sore you know is health span the term we use well how do you think how do you think you market it in a manner of speaking to a crowd that's not um, literate to the idea of longevity or, or that doesn't yet care about longevity. I don't know if just old people care about longevity because it's like, oh, damn, <laughs> I should try to, uh-oh, or what, right? Like, how do we how do we market this? What is the language that we can use for the health consumer? Well, I, I'd say, first of all, that the, the concept longevity is uh, actually making its way into the, you know, the zeitgeist, the, the, the common, you know, uh, wellness consumers starting to be turned on to the topic, right? You you hear from people like uh, Dr. David Sinclair, Dr. Peter Atia, um, 
uh, Dr. Peter Diamandis. Um, Mark Hyman just published a book on the topic. Uh, there, there's a lot of a lot of attention being brought to the concept of longevity. So I think on its own, it's kind of going to take care of itself in many senses. But saying like up to this point, um, first of all, like you you asked who who's interested in it most. Um, I would say biohackers were, are probably the earliest adopters of it. Uh, and, and that's what we saw in our customer uh, base and, and it tends to be more science minded people. Uh, and uh, but but we're making our way beyond that into more general audiences. Uh, when it comes to ages, we see everyone from people in their 20s starting to become aware of this to a really strong presence in 30s and 40s, um, and definitely still 50s, 60s, 70s. Uh, but I would say that that the 30s, people in their 30s especially, they were they were raised on the internet. They feel like uh, anything is possible if you do the research, like the internet is this web of information, so much information, you can learn how to improve things. And they're seeing their parents getting older and they're, they, they wanna do everything they can to try to avoid that and be as young as they can forever. So um, I, I think it's it's already in the mindset of, of so many of these 30 year olds, 40 year olds, uh, that it's, it's relatively easy to, to, uh, convince them that this is relevant to them. What you start with, I think is really talking about, uh, you know, what, what they see in their, their family members, older people in their family that they care about, whether they're coming down with chronic illnesses, or they're just not as capable as they were before, or they look very different and so on, then making them aware that you're no different. This is going to happen to you as well. But that the difference now is that we have a lot of research. We've learned more in the past five years than than a thousand years combined about aging, right? So we've it's exponential the pace in which we're learning about aging. Mm -hmm. And so with this information, you can now start putting the brakes on that process. Whereas before it was very general advice, like just eat healthy and you know, be physically active and so on. But now we can be very, very specific about which things, which foods, which protein sources, which types of fats and so on are going to accelerate or decelerate aging or increase the risk of disease or decrease the risk of disease. So we're at a, it's a whole new paradigm now. Mm. And uh, I think that that people are very receptive to it. So I, I can totally see folks in their 30s and 40s. They've been in the workforce now, hopefully, for 10 or 20 years. They've got some discretionary income and they feel the impact of the wear and tear on an adult body working full time, maybe raising a couple of kids and trying to have some sort of like social life, right? And which often now just means drinking because you're not necessarily playing baseball or bass, you know what I mean? So the wear and tear and they're, they still feel young. I still feel young. I'm 51. I still feel young, right? I can imagine someone at the age of 35 and I remember being there like, what the hell? I'm not that old, you know? Um, I should not feel this way. And you're still young enough, I think, to really, for your body to do some of this heavy lifting if it's given the right tools. So it makes complete sense, I think, for health coaches and entrepreneurs in this space to target that demographic. You're right. I mean, I, I kind of misread this in the beginning of our conversation, thinking in terms of older folks, but if, if we can, I, I think we can still help those people. Absolutely. But I, I really think the meat and potatoes are going to be this, this age group. And by the way, this age group, if we can make them healthier, can help save the healthcare system later on right? There will be less of a burden on it. So I'm all in on this. So let's, I mean, if you wouldn't mind sharing, let's, do you mind going through these nine causes of aging? Or you said now it's 12. <laughs> right. Wow. Um, I'd love to dive into those if you don't mind. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So um, yeah, I can, I can list them off and just give brief explanations of each of them. So uh -huh. the one is mitochondrial dysfunction. So the power plants of, of our cells converting the foods we eat, the carbs, the fats, the proteins into energy. Uh, we have fewer of them as we age and the ones that we do have, they become increasingly dysfunctional. So when the cells aren't energized enough, then the organs don't behave the way that they should. Uh, the second is cellular senescence. I mentioned this before. These are the zombie cells that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, number three is loss of proteostasis. So proteostasis is, uh, you kind of hear it in the, in the word, it's, it relates to proteins. So these proteins, they accumulate inside and outside of our cells. 
and they interfere with the proper functioning of of the cells. Imagine if if you have trash in your home and outside of your home, now you can no longer easily enter the building. You can no longer get into the kitchen. Similar with cells, you can't. They don't function as well with all of these proteins building up. Uh, number four is altered intracellular communication. So when we get older, our cells become uh, more exposed to increasingly hostile environments, largely because all of these different hallmarks are kind of conspiring against us, right? And it leads to things like inflammation, which we'll get to because that's one of the new hallmarks of aging. Mm -hmm. It's it's inflam aging, inflammaging, right? It's mm -hmm. this oh. chronic low-grade inflammation. Um, senescent cells, dysfunctional stem cells, all of these things um, then prevent the cells from being able to communicate with each other well. Because keep in mind, our bodies are this very complex, vast network. They're secreting different molecules that then other cells are then picking up on to get the signal of what they should be doing. And so that starts to break down as we get older. Number five is genomic instability. So this is commonly thought of as being DNA damage. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, when you're exposed to UV radiation, for example, you're getting uh, DNA damage taking place. Now, a, a moderate amount of that is okay. Our bodies have, have repair tools to then go in and repair that DNA. But if you do it a lot, then this mm -hmm. DNA you can't repair it well enough. And then you have these mutations that take place. And then these mutations can build up into bigger, worse things like cancer, for example. So that's number five, genomic instability. Uh, number six is epigenetic alterations. So your epigenome is the layer that sits on top of your genome. And you can think of it as uh, if your genome is a piano, the epigenome is the piano player. It's deciding which genes to express and which genes not to express. And just like music, you could be playing Tchaikovsky, a beautiful song, right? Or you could be like a kid just crashing down on the keys. And so as you get older, it goes from this beautiful, this beautiful uh, solo to something that sounds um, like certain keys are out of out of place or out of rhythm. And that is how our epigenome starts to get dysregulated as we age. Now, the epigenome, I'll just briefly mention, is really interesting because uh, scientists have been able to create biological age clocks based on them. In fact, my company, Novos Labs, offers the most powerful one in the world created by uh, Columbia University and Duke University researchers. And looking at your epigenome and the patterns that emerge in people's epigenomes, we can then tell how old you are biologically and your pace of aging. Or is your aging accelerating or is it decelerating? Um, really important topic that we can we can talk about at some other point if you'd like. Yeah. Number seven is telomere shortening. So your telomeres are the protective end caps of your chromosomes, and your chromosomes contain your DNA. And as I was mentioning before, you have DNA damage or genomic instability as a hallmark of aging. Well, when that happens, you need um, more DNA to be um, used to create new cells. And as that's happening, as cells are being damaged and you need new cells, your telomeres are getting shorter and shorter. They're kind of like the, sh the ends of your shoelaces. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're, if, as long as there's a certain length, they'll be good. It doesn't matter if they're super long or like moderate length, but when they get too short, then that's a problem because then the laces start to fray and the same mm -hmm. thing happens with DNA. And so you see higher risks of things like... Uh, uh, gastrointestinal cancers, for example, when your telomeres are too short. The good thing is you can lengthen telomeres based on diet and supplements. Uh, number eight is deregulated nutrient sensing. So as we age, uh, our cells become less tuned to nutrient uh, signals. So this is essentially, if you imagine like blood glucose going up or you're less insulin sensitive or your triglycerides and your cholesterol levels rise, this is essentially our, our cells being less sensitive to the signals exhibited by the, the nutrients. Number nine is stem cell exhaustion. So we've all heard about stem cells. And as we age, uh, they, they become either dysfunctional or they actually die off. So as a result of stem cells not being able to produce these nice brand new copies of our cells, the tissues and by extension organs are less replenished and not as maintained as they would otherwise be. Um, number 10, as I was mentioning before, is inflammation. So it's mm. a play on words, but it's um, it's inflammation caused by aging. And it's this chronic low-grade inflammation that 
uh, increases a little bit over time. It's almost like I kind of think of it as like the frog in the pot of boiling water, mm -hmm. right? Like it, the, the water is tepid at first and then it becomes slightly hotter and hotter and hotter. And that's what's happening to you as you age. So you want to do everything you can to make sure that it doesn't start to boil because that's when things really go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, number, what are we up to here? 11 okay. is uh, disabled autophagy. So autophagy is, you know, cellular um, cleanup process uh, in which cells and cellular components are being like eaten up and recycled. And as we get older, that's not happening as much. And it, it kind of relates to um, the, the loss of proteostasis, uh, but is different enough to have its own category. And then finally, number 12 is microbiome dysbiosis. So mm -hmm. uh, we've come to realize how important the microbiome is. Well, the microbiome actually uh, can have a direct impact on the aging process and aging itself can then impact the microbiome. Like for example, you see very distinct species of probiotics in a 20 year old compared to a 80 year old or that same person throughout time, their probiotic strains and bacteria population changes significantly as they're getting older. Of course, you can also change it through lifestyle and diet and so on. But just the aging process on its own is changing it. For example, Acromancia is this probiotic strain that's associated with very long-lived people. It's very low in young people, and it's very high in the older, longer-lived people. Um, so that's it. That's all 12, if that wasn't oh. enough. <laughs> oh, gosh. Those are so good. I feel like that biome stuff is like really front of mind for me because we just completed a course with Dr. William Davis and he's an encyclopedic knowledge of all of these species and which ones are present in young people, old people, um, some of these blue zone elderly populations. Oh my gosh, there's just so many that we can dump, dive into. I, I really am drawn to inflammaging. First of all, first of all, two things. You're really good at metaphors. Great at metaphors. <laughs> Gives a lot of good metaphors so we can understand this. Um, inflammation, when you use the, 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 the frog slowly boiling in the pot, that's literally the metaphor I use when I describe it to my clients, the slow boiling, the frog. Um, but you said, I jotted it down when you said inflammation caused by aging, which is like upside down from what I thought. I thought aging caused aging was caused by inflammation. Is it both? How does this it, play? Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's both. I mean, so if you imagine if you're doing things that are highly inflammatory, um, imagine someone with a highly inflammatory lifestyle. So they are out bathing in the sun, they are drinking a lot of alcohol, they're eating, you know, unhealthy foods and too much of them. And keep in mind, like our metabolisms create oxidation and damage to our bodies. Like it's inevitable as healthy as you might eat. Anytime you eat and your metabolism is functioning, damage takes place. It's just a, a truth of, of life, right? So imagine that someone, someone has a very inflammatory lifestyle. They are going to now start accelerating a lot of these other processes that, that I, I talked about. Um, they're going to cause more DNA damage. And then uh, the epigenome is going to be more dysregulated. And uh, you know, you're know, you going to have more proteins building up outside of the cells and inside of the cells. And all of these things conspire to then lead to increases in inflammation and acceleration of aging. On the other hand, because all of these hallmarks of aging or, or causes of aging naturally take place as we get older, Although it will take more time, eventually those things are still going to catch up to you mm -hmm. and start to cause this low grade inflammation, not, not a high amount of inflammation from the start, but a low grade inflammation that is building over time. And, and that's why for longevity medicine uh, or longevity science, th the goal is to try to slow down these, these hallmarks. So, what, what I would say is most of the companies in the space to this point, they, uh, they're they biotech companies. When I got started with Novos, I was going to biotech conferences and there were no consumer companies in the space yet. And scientists focus on just like one target usually. It's like, let me address senescent cells. Let me address the epigenome. They, they're reductionistic scientists, right? Like they want to like figure out how to solve a simple problem and then get increasingly complex after they solve it. And 
I thought, well, you know, I, I'm I'm slowly dying here, right? Like I'm alive <laughs> and I, my, my lifespan is only so long. So I need to be more aggressive with this in a safe and accountable way, of course. And I want to address all of the hallmarks simultaneously, not just one at a time. Mm. And so we were the first company to address all hallmarks of aging simultaneously for exactly that, that reason, Erin, to, to try to put the brakes on all of the hallmarks, including the inflammation, right? So to mm. slow down that process, regardless of your lifestyle, whether you are chronically inflamed because you're unhealthy or you're super healthy, what we provide will still help in either of those scenarios. Yeah. You know, I'm going to tee this up for you a little bit. A lot, not all of it, but a lot of what you listed here, we address in some fashion in our training with our, so people that graduate from our particular school are familiar with a lot of this terminology. We talk about mitochondrial dysfunction. We talked about the um, the epigenome and understanding genetics relative to epigenetics and the ability to influence those things through behaviors and choices. We talk about um, inflammation, absolutely. The micro. We talk about a lot of this stuff, but there's also a lot that um, that that I think because many of the people that take our program are familiar with some of it, it's not such a big leap for them to really understand kind of what you're talking about in terms of these these twelve. And one things we, one of the things we want to do um, both with this podcast, not just our school, but just with our podcast and health coaches in general, is empowering health coaches to empower their clients to make decisions for themselves and choices for themselves and find solutions and resources that can aid them in the direction they go when they're not finding that kind of support through other means, typically insurance funded means, <laughs> right? So so I could see this as for folks in particular that want to make this sort of their, their niche, you're going to need some resources that you can draw on and consumer friendly resources because health coach is really, it's out of scope for us to go, you know, um, order a lab and, and make a diagnosis. We need to work with collaborative businesses that can help bridge that gap for us when, when things are sort of out of scope and can help explain the end test result. What does this really now mean in practical terms and where are the solutions, whether it's lifestyle modifications, certain supplements and things like that. So can you tell us more about Novos? Um, you know, I heard you mention kind of some testing and, and then I know there's supplements involved. So give us the rundown of kind of what you do. Sure. So Novos, I established as a public benefit corporation or a PBC uh, because Novos is truly a, a labor of love. It's um, I'm passionate about it from you know what I went through as a teenager with a brain tumor. Um, I also unfortunately lost my mother um, to pancreatic cancer while starting the company, and it uh, I, I was closer to my mother than anyone else in my life. So, um, so so I, I wanted to make sure that we were not only you know profit driven, which is what 99.9% .9 of the companies are, but, uh, but also doing things for the public at large as well. And so I look at Novos as having three legs to the stool. Um, the first leg, which I would say is what we do, um, where we're able to do the most for the public is in the form of knowledge and information. So educating people on this topic. Uh, in in uh, taking the scientific complex information and then simplifying it so that anyone can understand it. But at that, with that said, we don't dumb it down. We still keep it very sophisticated. Um, all of our content is written by PhDs and MDs uh, and um, it, it has uh, references for all of the claims that we make. So it's scientifically referenced. And this is all free. Uh, we've got more than 120 articles at this point and that's growing. Uh, and I do uh, podcasts like this. I do webinars as well. Um, and so that's just, the beginning, right? So uh, we're going to build this out even more. Uh, the second leg of the stool is testing. So for testing, we're still able to do some free things uh, for the community. So the free things are, one is we have a, a questionnaire on our website where you can get a longevity score. Uh, this is based on, again, research and, and um, MDs um, putting together this questionnaire. And it, it looks at your lifestyle, your family history, and so on, and then gives you essentially a score. Um, and we then give you content for you to then be able to learn how to improve your score. Another free test we offer is something called face age. So face age 
is a AI technology trained on more than 12 million people where you can take a selfie of your face and it will tell you how old you facial your face looks and then your skin health markers, things like uh, redness, which is indicative of inflammation, uh, pore size, wrinkles, and so on. And so this is, you know, it's not as good as going internal to the body, but as we discussed at the very beginning, our faces are a reflection of, uh, or a symptom of aging, right? Like the way that our faces, the adipose tissue, the, the wrinkling and so on, how that changes over time is a, is a rough marker for how we're aging internally as well. And so we offer this for free. Uh, and then we also offer what I re referenced earlier, an epigenetic age kit. This is what I mentioned was collaboration between uh, Columbia and Duke University has more research than any other uh, biological age test out there. A lot of these tests are popping up uh, with like one self-published study, for example. This has 45 studies from 30 independent labs across the world. It is a third generation test. It's a, it's a simple blood test. Saliva tests are not nearly as powerful and accurate as the blood tests are. Um, and it's relatively affordable, um, around uh, $299. And we also then give you other outputs, like for example, your telomere length, which is not nearly as important and powerful as the epigenetic test, but it's a biomarker that you might wanna be aware of and just track how it's changing over time. Uh, and so that's that's the second leg to the stool is the testing. So I look at this, I, I liken it to like a scale for weight loss, right? Like this is how you can track. Now, not everyone needs to track, but we wanna, you know, uh, uh, we want to uh, empower our customers and we believe so much in our formulations that we're willing to pull it all out there, third-party neutral independent tests for you to figure out yourself. We don't run the labs ourselves. We work with another lab external. So it's all you know um, accurate, um, not co-mingled information in any way. And then finally, uh, the third leg of the stool is our formulations. So we have two right now. Uh, we have Novos Core and Novos Boost. Novos Core is out what we're most proud of. It's a uh, formulation with 12 longevity ingredients. It addresses all 12 hallmarks of aging. It's the very first formula to do so. We have uh, uh, it, we base it on more than 220 scientific studies that that we've accumulated based on different um, hallmarks of aging or diseases of aging in multiple species and humans as well. Uh, we have done some testing of it as well. So a scientific labs, independent third-party labs, um, in vitro human uh, cell studies of DNA damage. We reduce DNA damage by an off-the-charts level compared to other natural supplements and even prescription drugs. Uh, we reduce senescent cells uh, to an order of magnitude comparable to a gold standard longevity drug called rapamycin. Mm -hmm. um, and we also did a case study where 73% of the participants uh, saw a reversal in their pace of aging. And of the 27% that did not, 0% of them accelerated aging, despite lifestyle stressors that they may have had. So we consider it a huge success. Everyone either improved, uh, the gross majority improved, or stayed uh, stable. Uh, it's a it's a powder drink mix. I can show you, show you actually. So uh, this is what it looks like. And you tear open a sachet and you pour it in your water. We have orange flavored, zero calories, vegan, so on and so forth. Um, and then an unflavored version that you can throw into like a smoothie or a juice. Uh, it's seven grams of active ingredients. When you think of most supplements, they're giving you 250 milligrams or 500 milligrams, or maybe up to two grams. This is seven grams of these 12 ingredients so it's really good value for your money. Uh, if you subscribe for a 12 month plan, for example, it's only $79 a month. Um, and then the other product is Novos Boost, which is a popular longevity ingredient called NMN, which stands for nicotinamide mononucleotide. And uh, this ingredient has, has been shown to increase your levels of NAD+, which is important for things like DNA repair and your metabolism and energy production. And it's been shown to improve health span in many different um, animal studies and presumably for humans as well. Uh, and so those are our two products. Uh, if you had to choose one, I would choose core. Uh, if you can go for everything, do core and boost. Uh, but if budget is a real problem and you can't afford core, then you might want to consider uh, boost on its own. Wow. I like that it's a drink. That makes it easy. I feel like <laughs> I get a lot of, I have a lot of drinks I have to drink in the given day. 
Um, I like this. I like this. I like this three leg of the stool thing because it's not like that formulation. The formulations are going to solve everything for you. It has to be. It has to be all of these pieces together. Right. Um, huge fan of education as being one of the pillars. That's what I think health coaching is as well. Education, accountability, support. Um, the I have a question about so the 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 study you did where seventy seventy three percent of people had you know improvement in aging twenty seven percent you know didn't maybe notice improvement but didn't lo- notice any backslide like what is that what is the experience for these people of aging better can you articulate that sure so uh, I'll I'll explain the study in the first place so uh, people took the test before taking Novos. Then they took Novos Core and Boost for six months, and then they took the test again. Okay. And what the results were was based on this um, test that I, I've mentioned, this epigenetic test. It's called the Dunedin Pace Clock. Um, with this clock, uh, we were able to show their their pace of aging. So if you imagine a, a score of a one means that every one year of chronological year, you're aging one year biologically. So you're essentially average. Um, and if you're at 1.2, maybe you smoke a pack a day, you're, you're aging 20% faster than others do. If you're at 0.9, for example, you're aging 10% slower than others do. Um, my score, for example, uh, the lab had told me that it was the best score they've ever seen after testing thousands of people. It was 0.69. Uh, so that would imply 31% slower, slower aging. Uh, and so what, what does it actually mean? Well, you know, there, there's no uh, I would say the science is, is earlier in the sense of, I, I don't think that they have, scientists have actually gotten the qualitative feedback to be able to, you know, make a scientifically valid statement about this is the difference in how these people feel and, you know, and so on from that reversal, because we're only now getting to that point of being able to show certain interventions are able to reduce the biological rate of aging. Uh, so it's very early. So all I can speak of is anecdotes. And what I can say is that at least for people using the Novos Core product, um, they find things like improvements in their sleep, uh, improvements in their energy levels, which is presumably partially as a result of improvements in sleep. It's only logical, right? Uh, Improvements in skin health, which makes sense because we do have ingredients that um, can definitely improve skin health uh, in the, in the shorter term, like in the matter of just a few short months. Uh, So for example, um, hyaluronic acid, Mm -hmm. which you can take orally, but believe it or not, we didn't include the hyaluronic acid specifically for the skin health benefit. Although that was a nice to have benefit. We included it because hyaluronic acid includes a molecule called acetyl glucosamine. And that has been shown to extend lifespan in multiple animal species. Um, we also have another ingredient, um, calcium alpha ketoglutarate, which declines significantly as we age. Uh, but it's also found to um, improve, uh, you know, aging process, uh, extend lifespan, slow down your epigenetic aging, and can also improve skin health. So we've got, I think, four ingredients that uh, have been shown to improve skin health in in the formula. So that's another thing they feel. And I would say the last thing that's very commonly reported is an improvement in calmness or mood. Hmm. And um, that is is due to certain ingredients. Like for example, one of our ingredients is a microdose, and I emphasize microdose of lithium. So lithium, a lot of people either associate it with like cell phone batteries going on fire, um, or <laughs> with toxic uh, mouth meth. <laughs> yeah, or or yeah, or uh, also bipolar disorder, right? So, uh, but in those those cases, it is a hundred times the dosage that is in Novos. And it's important for people to realize that lithium is a natural substance that we evolved with. So it's in the water supply. If you get San Pellegrino water, for example, you're getting lithium in your water. Um, Wild fish like salmon, they're consuming lithium. It leaches through the rocks into, into water supply and then by extension into plants and animals. But now we get very, very, very little amount of lithium because of water purification, for example, and factory farming. Uh, but New York Times did a study on this, um, or sorry, uh, an article on this, where uh, they they looked into regions where people had higher levels of lithium in their natural water supply. And they found that these regions had lower rates of uh, depression, of suicide, of rape, 
So all of these things that can lead to like mental instability actually were found to at these lower doses of around a half a milligram to two milligrams or so um, uh, to have all of these benefits, not to mention when it comes to longevity, lower rates of Alzheimer's, improvements in the, um, in the uh, uh, epigenome and so on. So we include one milligram as opposed to say a hundred milligrams that might be prescribed. Gosh, that is so cool. That is like the most novel thing. I've never heard someone talk about the health benefits of lithium. <laughs> like, check, that is so interesting. I bet you this can't get across the border. The Canada can it. <laughs> so it's the it episode can. where Erin gets fascinated yeah. about something. She's like looking up the website. She's like, I'm spending more her money. You know, but the, the whole kind of like biofeedback is, is super important too. I mean, it, I, anecdotes, I think, do say a lot, right? Um, in terms of just what you're hearing in the biofeedback of the people that have started to take this. I'd be fascinated to learn if you notice differences in certain areas, depending on how old someone is or how much damage is already done, relative, you know, and, and where, what usually gets kind of the, the biggest lift for people. Um, you know, look, I mean, I don't know, energy issues and sleep issues are other than weight loss, those are the next two issues that I'm dealing with a lot of times with every client that I have kind of coming in the door. And I, I, I don't know about you, Erin, but I also often get a request for like, what supplements can I be taking to help aid this kind of stuff? And these are people that rely a lot on energy drinks, uh, rely a lot on coffee, and then they can't sleep. So they're dosing themselves with alcohol or sleep medication so that they can fall asleep and continuing to do more damage. So this is where, you know, from a health coaching perspective, I'm, I'm an advocate of let's, let's fix the hardware before we start adding more software, you know, let's fix the diet. Let's, let's get you moving more. Let's start exhibiting the behaviors in the morning that really need to be there. So you can, so, so that's always my starting place. Um, and supplementation isn't an area we spend a lot of time on in our course because it, it really is very um, kind of individualized in many cases. But it sounds to me like you've been able to develop a broad spectrum supplement that kind of regardless of where your issue is based on this test, you're still going to be able to find some significant benefit. Yes, though, though, if I if I can give some uh, some feedback or commentary on, on those topics of like loss okay. of energy and so on. So. Um, I, in my experience in, in speaking with, uh, I'm not a, a health coach per se, but a lot of friends come to me for health advice. And, and most recently, my father was one of those people saying that he needs to use, he's, he's very good health. He's, he's in his uh, mid seventies and, uh, and, and people have said that he looks younger and he owes it to uh, taking Novos. Um, but uh, his energy levels have have um, not been great, and he needs to take a Celsius energy drink every morning to like feel energized. Um, and what it ended up being was dehydration. He just wasn't having enough water, and he wasn't having enough electrolytes in that water. A lot of people will drink more water, but they don't add the electrolytes, so they then further dehydrate themselves. So even if that means getting like, I buy sodium potassium salt, like the light salt, and I put like a, a, a little bit of that in my water anytime I'm drinking water. And that's basically your cheap, almost free way to be able to get electrolytes in your water. And you drink a lot more of that and energy levels oftentimes go up for a lot of people. There's oh, yeah. like chronic dehydration across society right now. Um, I would say when it comes to supplements and, and basic nutrients, our, our perspective on this is that it is almost impossible to get adequate nutrients, I, I'm talking about the essential nutrients, everything from the B vitamins to C, E, D, and so on, just through diet alone, uh, for a number of reasons. One is that, uh, you know, with, with farming techniques now, uh, it, compared to historically, uh, foods don't have nearly as many nutrients in them as they have historically. Another thing is we're living longer lives than we ever have before. And it's scientifically shown that as you get older, you absorb fewer nutrients through your microbiome into your body um, as you do when you're younger. So just the process of aging alone means that you're going to need a higher dose to be able to get an adequate amount of it. Um, and there, there are multiple other reasons why, why we recommend it. We talk about it on the website, but for the sake of time, what, what I would say is that our recommendation ultimately leads to us suggesting that people supplement nonetheless, because you don't know where your deficiency might be. Right. And as long as you're not overdoing it, like for example, overdosing on fat soluble vitamins, 
You're not going to cause any harm, but you're going to protect against a deficiency. And blood tests are not particularly good for nutrient deficiencies because it's looking at serum levels. It's not looking at cellular levels and so on. So, um, so you can't necessarily trust the blood tests, uh, so to speak. And so we recommend that you get the supplementation. So the way that we recommend it is that most multivitamins are, are not that great, but there are certain brands out there that make, make some good ones like, uh, doctor's best and now brands and so on. So get, get a good general multi and then add another layer on top of that. They typically don't have enough vitamin D and vitamin K. Um, they might not have the right form of vitamin A. You want the, the uh, retinal form of vitamin A um, and a few other nutrients, which we talk about on our website as well. And then the third layer that you want to put on top of that is it, it comes down to like the minerals, the magnesium, yeah. mm -hmm. the potassium, which pe most people are deficient in potassium, but that you can remedy with literally the light salt that I was talking about. You're going to cut your sodium in half and you're now going to increase your potassium by a significant margin if you use light salt. Um, and then make sure you get enough calcium. And uh, especially if people are, are, are not having as much milk nowadays and dairy products, they're probably deficient in calcium. Make sure you supplement then in that case with calcium. Uh, and so that's the general health essential nutrients that you want to be able to feel your best. And then Novos is the longevity supplement. Novos is about extending your health span and lifespan for all of those other reasons we've talked about. Awesome. Very nice. Very useful. Oh my gosh. Yes. I'm definitely going to have to get out my uh, wallet again um, because <laughs> you, I mean, you just, you painted a compelling picture. I, I, you know, I go back to my earlier comment, which is that the health and wellness industry has been putting, putting health and wellness into these kind of silos, but it, it's, it, it's, you know, everything has tendrils and everything else. We have to take this holistic view. Um, and, and so I love that you've put the, the thought into it and it, you've clearly put the thought into it. your organization has done epic amounts of research and product development. And, um, there's, I just, I just feel like there's a lot of utility there that a lot of health coaches can use and learn from and I'm grateful that we got to learn from you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I, 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 I would, be insincere if I if I didn't credit the people on our team. So we have a scientific advisory board of six members um, from Harvard Medical School, from MIT, and from the Salk Institute. Very uh, renowned researchers in the longevity space. People like Dr. George Church, who invented genome sequencing in 1984. Right. So uh, very significant figures who have helped us and um, our research team and uh, medical doctors and PhDs. Uh, all, all have come together and helped us to get to this point. So it's, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the one out there speaking on behalf of, of my company, but it's really the, the collaboration of all of these minds together that have brought us to where we are. I love it, man. I learned a lot. Where can people find you and learn more? Where can they find you? So novoslabs.com. Um, we also, I think it's relevant for, for your listeners that we, we do have an affiliate program where any sales, uh, there can be commissions for that, which you can find, I believe at the footer of the page, there's a link for, um, affiliate programs and you can apply and we can get back to you on that. Um, and so novoslabs.com also has the blog where all of this information is. We also have evidence and, um, for the scientific evidence behind our formulations and so on, but it's treated as a, a, a learning resource, an education resource. If you don't buy anything, if you don't become an affiliate, that's fine. Uh, it's important just to get this message about longevity out there. Uh, and we're on all of the social networks as novoslabs. And then I personally have a blog, slowmyage.com where I give my own um, results of these biological age tests and other biomarkers and talk a little bit about my lifestyle, um, have some commentary about longevity as, as, a, as a space. And so slowmyage.com is the site. And then you can also go um, on Instagram and Twitter and follow me as slowmyage. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was so great. Of course. Thank you guys. This podcast was brought to you by Primal Health Coach Institute. To learn more about how to become a successful health coach, get in touch with us by visiting primalhealthcoach.com forward slash call. Or if you're already a successful health coach, practitioner, influencer, or thought leader with a thriving business and an interesting story, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with us at hello at primalhealthcoach.com and let us know why we need to interview you for Health Coach Radio. Thanks for listening.